What's up guys? Today we're going to be building the neck. We're going to start off by taking some measurements and then we're going to use the router to cut in our truss rod slot. So let's get to it. Alright, so as you can see I've gone ahead and I've measured out where my truss rod is going to sit and I've set up my router fence to the correct spacing and I'm going to do this in a couple of passes. I don't want to try to hog all of that out all at once. And what I like to do is just put a piece of masking tape on my fence so that when I run it through, I know where to stop so I don't go up into the headstock. It works great for me. A lot of people have different ways of doing this, but this is how I do it. Alright, so now the last thing to do is to cut out this section up here for the adjuster on the top of the truss rod. So I've swapped from a quarter inch router bit to a three eighths and I've done the same thing you saw me do earlier, marked my fence with some masking tape so I know where to start and where to stop. <laughs> Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 5 8 Forstner bit to open up this area right at the head of the truss rod to allow access for adjustment. You might have noticed that I cut this slot all the way through the bottom of the net. Well, that's just how I like to do it. I, uh, I generally take a piece of white pine and just uh, sand it till it fits nice and snug, glue it in the bottom of there, and voila. Voila! Alright, I've gone ahead, screwed my template to the neck blank. I'm going to go ahead and roughly cut this out with the bandsaw, and then I'm going to move on to the router with the template bit, like you've seen me do before, and cut this out to shape. Alright, there it is, roughly cut out. Now we're moving on to the template bit. Alright guys, so here it is, all cut out, ready to go. Next thing I'm going to be doing is driving in some little locating pins. And you want to be sure when you do that, that they line up with where your 
your fret slots are so that you don't end up with one in the fret slot. Um, I'm also going to be doing something different. I'm going to be using this fretboard, which is a pre-made fretboard. It's already radius and slotted and everything. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's rosewood. I usually use oak or maple making my fretboards. But I think this rosewood is going to look great with the burn on this guitar. I think it's really going to match and pop. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, you can see I've got just a little bitty pin here. All it is is like a picture nail, and I hammered it in and clipped it off. And then I have another one here at the end, and they correspond with these little holes that I have drilled out on the fretboard. So when I put it on here, let's see if I can line it up one-handed. It should, yep, snaps right in. Let's see, now it's not going anywhere once I glue it. That'll just help it keep from sliding off and being all crooked, because that's bad. So, that's done. Okay, Tide Bond 2. That's what I like to use. And that's what I'm gonna use. A good little trick is to uh, tape up the truss rod with some masking tape so you don't get glue all in there. But we want to glue both sides, this and the fretboard, to make sure there's plenty of glue and it glues up well. And then we're just going to clamp the snot out of it. Always use just scrap wood like this. And you get a big old glob on it. And then you can smear it everywhere and make a giant mess. It's quite fun. Okay, now we're at the clamp the snot out of it phase. Not that exciting, but... That should do. All right, it's tomorrow, and by tomorrow I mean two days later, but we're gonna get this thing unclamped, and then we're gonna do uh, what you've seen me do before, rough cut it out, run it through the uh, template bit, and then I'll show you what we have after that. So off camera, I just decided to drop this thing, I don't know if you can see that, right there, knocked a big old chunk out of it. So I got lucky and I found the pieces, I'm going to try to glue them back in and see if I can repair this. Huge bummer though. Okay, a little super glue and some sanding, that's really not too bad. I've got to decide what I'm going to do with this. I don't have this problem making my own necks. This, uh, this neck was fretted for a, a longer scale guitar if you wanted it, but it just happened to fall right here where I don't need it. So I think I might actually attempt doing the same thing, a little super glue and sand it and see if I can fill that in. So uh, you won't notice it. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, that works really well. You can still kind of see it, but I don't think if you... If you didn't know what you were looking for, I don't think you would notice it. And I'm also super happy I was able to fix this. If you don't know the super glue and sanding trick, all you do is you shoot a little super glue in there and then you sand it. Simple as that. And just the sawdust will fill in the, the cracks and uh, man, it's almost invisible. It looks great. I'm, I'm really proud of that. You know, and another thing, guys, if you're working on a project like this and you have a huge mistake like that, it's okay. Just, you know take a take a step back figure out what you're gonna do you can generally fix it you can figure out some way to fix it and if not you know sometimes you just gotta start over but in this case no one's perfect but Jesus and this guitar is not perfect you know I'm doing the best I can and I think that is pretty darn good so let's move on to the next step all right, so here's the next jig I'll be using. I built it just for this purpose. Basically all it is is a clamp to hold the neck into place and then a fence for the router to ride on. And it's just to take this headstock thickness from three quarters of an inch down to roughly five eighths of an inch. And then I just have these stops so that I don't go too far into the fretboard. And actually once I get up here closer to the nut, I'll switch over to this rounded, round nose bit here which will give this a nice clean edge up by the nut. So let's get to it. Alright guys, 
guys, so it's been a few days, but I'm back on this. I've gone ahead and marked out the location of my tuners so I can drill the holes for those. And then I'm going to show you what I have in mind for fret markers on this guitar, which I think is going to be pretty cool. So let's do it. Come with me. <laughs> So I got my tuner holes drilled. Next, I'm going to be masking off where my fret markers go. I like to use this old scrap neck just to lay beside it, make sure I don't make a mistake. And then after that, I have this uh, white acrylic ink, and I'm going to actually just be ragging that on. And it looks really cool in my opinion. So uh, let me show you how I do that. Put some frets in, guys. All right, so this is how fret wire comes. Hopefully you can see that. It's just, uh, so it's round on top, and then it just has a little slot here with some barbs on it. And it fits in here and the barbs help lock it in. I like to use a little bit of super glue just to ensure that it doesn't come loose with time, you know. And then uh, we just hammer it in with this little uh, fret hammer. Piece of cake. Always save. I have some fall off pieces from before that usually work out good for right here. So I like to start off with that. So let's get started. Make sure the super glue is still good. I may have to open a new one. Looks like it. No, no, it's still good. Just made a giant mess. I like to put, put a pretty good amount on here and then just wipe it off so there's not too much left because I don't want it. Oops, I actually, I actually did the wrong one. That's fine. We'll just Ta-da! These are actually horse snippers. They what they're what they use to clip uh, horses' toenails, but they work great for this. No effort. Pro tip. <laughs> Ooh. 
All right, last one. All right, guys, that's got the frets in. As you can see, it turned out pretty good. Next, I'll uh, have to shape the ends and then do a full fret job. But uh, it's lunchtime for me, and I think this video is getting kind of long. So I think on that note, I'm going to call it for this video and watch out for part three. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check that out.